Hey everyone, welcome to lesson number eight. Today we're going to be learning a new note type and we'll go into detail on tempo and how to use a metronome. So first, let's talk about this new note type. This is called an eighth note and it's worth half a beat. In the British system, this is called a quaver. Now this looks very similar to a quarter note except now we have this little thing hanging off the side of the note stem which is called a flag and the flag will always go to the right whether the note stem is up or down so if this eighth note is worth half a beat then two eighth notes will be equal to one beat because one half plus one half equals one or one quarter note four eighth notes would be worth one half note because one half plus one half plus one half plus one half equals two and so on. So if you were to play a series of eight eighth notes while counting which would make up four beats this is how that would sound with me showing one two three four on the notes so that you'll count each beat going left to right. One two three four one two three four one Now those notes were played pretty fast and the counting might have even been lost for you and all those notes being played. So when you're dealing with eighth notes, sometimes it's useful to change the way we count. For example, if we still look at the string of eight eighth notes and wrote out how we would count them, we would still go one, two, three, four as shown, but it might make it clearer if we count the in-between eighth notes by saying, one and two and three and four and. The ands are noted by these plus signs. So we're still counting a beat with consistency, but now every eighth note in this series has a sound associated with it to help you keep track. Just make sure you don't forget this last and after counting four. You can count this way even if you don't have eighth notes. For example, if you look at this series of notes, Instead of just counting one, two, three, four, we could count the first quarter note as one and, the second quarter note as two and, then the half note as three and, four and. One more thing I'll mention about eighth notes is that when you have multiple eighth notes in a row, you don't show them like this. You would show them like this, with something called a beam that connects the note stems. Even if you have a long series of eighth notes, there are some guidelines for when you have breaks in the beam, even if the eighth notes are continuous. For example, here we've broken these into two groups of four eighth notes. We won't go into all the rules of breaking beams, but I will say that beams will never cross between measures. The beam will always be broken at each measure line. That's the only rule I want you to remember right now. So let's look at an exercise that uses eighth notes. If I wrote out how to count this, this is what that would look like. Look through each measure and through the counting and make sure that this all makes sense. So this is how this would sound. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Whenever you're practicing something that has eighth notes, remember that you're playing something that's a little bit faster than usual. So don't be afraid to slow things down as slow as you need to to hit the right notes at a consistent pace. Always remember to practice precision and accuracy first, then speed things up as you get more comfortable. Practicing for speed first will only lead to sloppy and inconsistent playing. Now let's move on to talking about tempo and the metronome. The tempo of a piece is simply the speed that you're playing at. And the tempo can be measured in something called BPM or beats per minute. And think of BPM like the speedometer of a car. The higher the BPM, the faster you're going. A BPM can be set on a metronome 
which is simply a device that will maintain a steady, consistent beat at whatever BPM you set it at. In almost all the exercises I've done so far, I've had a metronome in the background clicking at 100 BPM to give us a nice steady beat. So if BPM stands for beats per minute, then a tempo of 60 BPM would be one click every second. If we doubled it to 120 BPM, then that would be two clicks per second. And if we halved it to 30 BPM, then it would be one click every two seconds. If you're looking to buy a metronome, you can either get a mechanical metronome or a digital metronome, like one of these. It's nice having a standalone metronome right there at your piano, but if you're trying to be thrifty, there are a couple other options if you can't afford one of these. If you're using a keyboard, it most likely has a metronome built into it. Just look for a metronome button and try to figure out how to change the BPM. Another option is you can most likely find a free metronome app for your phone or tablet and just use that. And that's a great option because you probably have your phone handy most of the time anyway and it's nice and compact. The other option is to use one of many websites that provides a metronome in your internet browser. If you're going to go with that last route, the one I'll recommend is at metronomeonline.com. Of course, you're welcome to use any online metronome, but I'll use this one for my examples here. The nice thing about this metronome is that it has the appearance of an actual digital metronome, so if you used an actual metronome with a dial configuration like this one, it would be used exactly the same. The numbers in the outer circle are the different BPM settings you can set this at. So this would be 80 BPM, which would sound like this. And this would be 120 BPM, which sounds like this. I want you to pause the video and go to metronomeonline.com right now and play with the metronome at different speeds. When you're looking at a piece, you may be wondering how you will know what tempo you should be playing at. At the beginning of a piece, there are a few different ways to show tempo. One is to show a little note with the BPM that you should be using. And this literally means that you'll be playing at 110 quarter notes per minute, which is why it shows that quarter note. But in this example, it's easier to just say 110 beats per minute. They could, for example, show an eighth note there, and that would mean 110 eighth notes per minute. Another way to show tempo is very similar, but instead of showing a quarter note here, we show an MM which stands for metronome marks, followed by a BPM number. And yet another way is to have a fancy Italian word such as moderato to tell you the tempo. For that, let's look back at that online metronome. You'll notice how they have these Italian words all around the inner circle of the metronome and each one covers a range of tempos. The tempo in that exercise was shown as 110 BPM, which is moderato. If a piece said to play andante, you'll see that you should be playing somewhere in the range of 76 to 108 BPM. So when using these terms, you can see it's not an exact science, but it does give you a rough idea of what tempo you should be playing at. So here's a quick example that has a tempo of 75 BPM. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Here it is again, but sped up to 100 BPM. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Try using a metronome yourself and see if you can play this at both speeds. 
So now that I've told you all these different ways for how a composer can show the tempo of a piece, you might open up some piano books and see that there isn't any sort of specific tempo indication at all. And that's not very helpful. Sometimes they'll use words like moderately fast or energetic or lively and those don't really tell you how fast you should be playing a piece. In these cases there are a few things you can do. First thing you can try is just pick a tempo and roll with it. Just make sure that when you're playing you're keeping a consistent beat. If you can find a recording online of your piece you can try to use that as a reference. If you can't find any recordings sometimes you just need to pick something that feels right. If nothing else a good solid tempo to shoot for is 100 to 120 BPM. As you can probably tell the exact tempo of a piece isn't always an exact science. I'll do my best to have tempo indications on the materials that I prepare for these lessons but if I don't show anything then use 100 to 120 BPM as a guideline. Just a heads up, from here on out I'm not going to have the metronome clicking while I play through each exercise, although I will still count in to each exercise with the metronome. Having that metronome in the background can be a little distracting and honestly kind of annoying, but despite that it is an extremely valuable tool for learning to play the piano and making sure you're keeping on beat. Listen up, because what I'm about to say is the biggest thing I want you to take away from this lesson. The metronome is probably the most important tool you have to learn to play the piano well. You can learn to play the piano without a metronome, but I can pretty much guarantee you won't be playing it well, so please don't ignore it. I won't name any names, but I've seen so many YouTube performers playing piano that make it glaringly obvious that they haven't practiced with a metronome and it can be pretty painful to watch. A lot of people ignore the metronome because it's boring or it makes the piano feel mechanical but I'm not asking you to play with a metronome all the time. Even just a little metronome practice each week can make a huge difference in your playing. So never forget how useful and essential your metronome is in your practicing. So you might ask, when should you be using a metronome when practicing? And I would say between 20 and 30 percent of the time, but that all depends on how well you can keep a beat in your head and how long you've been playing. By playing with an actual metronome, it will help you develop the internal metronome in your head that will slowly get better with time. If you've already played an instrument before trying to learn the piano, there's a good chance you've already developed this metronome a bit already. There are a few different ways to effectively use a metronome to assist in your practicing and we won't cover them right now but in general if you're ever having difficulty with a particular section of a piece pull out that metronome and slow it way down and then gradually speed up as you get more comfortable with the piece. These are just some basic tips for now and we'll go into more detail in a later lesson on how to effectively use the metronome when practicing. When practicing without a metronome, there are a few things you can do to try to keep your beat and counting right. So something that you should have been doing already is counting in your head. And this works great, but you can still end up off beat if you're not careful. So another way would be to nod your head or tap your foot to the beat. I find that doing something physical with my body definitely helps me keep a beat better than just counting in my head. It helps give my whole body that sense of rhythm that I'm striving for. And that might just be a personal preference, but it's definitely worth a shot. The last thing you can do is to count out loud. And you might feel kind of silly saying one, two, three, four out loud while you're playing, but counting out loud really helps you put more focus on keeping a consistent beat. And you can do this at the same time as you're nodding your head or tapping your foot. Just one last item of business before we wrap things up. The next lesson as you're learning to use a sustain pedal. If you're using a keyboard and have not purchased your sustain pedal yet, now is the time to do it. Review lesson one if you don't have one yet. That's it for this lesson. Remember to do the worksheet that goes with this lesson, which you can find on our website. Feel free to email me with any questions you might have. Thanks for watching. See you next time.